Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. Following independence in 1962, Uganda thrived and was renowned as one of Africa's success stories. But decades of political instability have since robbed it of this accolade. In the southeast of the country, at the source of the Nile, lies the district of Jinja, where British-based charity Soft Power Education has run a school refurbishment program since 2002. Faced with Africa's fastest growing population and the ravages of HIV and AIDS, the Ugandan government has invested heavily in primary education. UPE means Universal Primary Education. It started in 1997. And before it started, there were very few children in Jinja district going to school. For example, before UPE, they, we had 30,000 children only in primary schools. And right now, as I talk, the number has doubled. We have uh, 67,000 children. One of those who has benefited from this policy is 12-year-old David Casolo. David lives with his sister and elderly grandfather in a community where the vast majority are subsistence farmers. To give himself a chance of breaking the cycle of poverty, every day David makes the walk to school. But the crowded classroom in which he learns illustrates the knock-on effect of the success of UPE. Because of that influx of the children, we experienced very many problems in the schools. Like we didn't have adequate classrooms, and also we didn't have enough textbooks, and also teachers had a very big task now of handling very many classes. Well, kids here have just got like really crappy pens and crappy books, and um, they very rarely get to do anything exciting in education. So we wanted a place where we could bring kids that was like really magical. This is the Amagezi Education Centre. 22 schools from the sub-counties of Budondo, Mafubira and Butagaya each send 60 children here four times a year. For the children who are in the P6 grade, their penultimate year of free education, it offers them an experience they simply don't get at their own school. The theatre lessons follow the government's social studies curriculum and address personal subjects such as AIDS or family bereavement in an open and friendly environment. In the arts class, they get a rare opportunity to be creative. And in science, they use equipment they've only ever seen in books. We take something from their book and we try to bring it to life. Yeah, for, yeah so they have, uh, they said they touch, they do experiments. Many of them, if you ask them about an experiment, they don't know what an experiment is. Then we say, well, an experiment, you do it, you do it for yourself. So we think that uh, the retention is much more better if they touched and they did it for themselves. The ICT class gives many of the children their first experience of a computer and through specially designed software teaches them the real basics such as how to use a mouse. This gives them a much needed mathematics lesson and also familiarizes them with a tool that is becoming ever more important in modern life. In the agriculture lesson, David learns about sustainable farming and takes part in an experiment about soil erosion and the importance of mulching. Alongside teaching him a valuable practical lesson, this also demonstrates one of the key principles behind what soft power is trying to achieve. When they go back, we tell them also to start what they have learned at the center in their homes so that they can also teach their parents modern agriculture and the whole community also benefits. The method of cascading knowledge into the community is also practiced elsewhere at the center. This is Elizabeth, the dinner lady from the local village. She cooks on the center's fuel-efficient stove, which uses much less firewood than a traditional three-stone fire. Besides promoting cost efficiency, it also provides the children with one of their favorite parts of the day, lunch. Back at her home, Soft Power has built a similar stove, which not only allows her to cook more efficiently for her own family, but also helps demonstrate its benefits within the community.
here at the center, we lack materials to use. When you go to our theater department, you'll find that we don't have furniture. When you go to the computer lab, okay, we just have only four uh, computers. And we would expect maybe to have at least one, uh, one kid per computer. When you go to our science uh, department, you also find that we still lack some equipment. Lack of resources is a constant problem. And the center is also limited by its capacity of just 60 children per day. To access more of the community, Soft Power follow up with an outreach session at its partner schools. It gives the children who are unable to visit a taste of the Amagazi experience. But it's just a drop in the ocean, and as is so often the case, the root cause of these frustrations is funding. I think for us it's because it's such a small amount of money. In the overall scheme of development and aid, what we're doing costs so little. So I think the centre costs about £25,000 to get up and running. And that's, that's nothing, is it? Nothing, it may seem. But the centre was launched on a shoestring budget with an abundance of volunteer help. The projected expenditure over the next five years tops £350,000 and it's imperative that this money is found. We can't just pack up and go home. We've got long-term objectives, long-term goals. We're just dealing with one year of schools. So all right, we have like 2,000 kids come, but we've got another 18,000 that are already seeing that when they reach P6, they'll get the opportunity to come. For the children lucky enough to visit, the Amagazi Education Centre really is the magical place Hannah envisaged and it works because of the attitude and hard work of those who run it. But it's only one centre, in one district, in one country whose population is mushrooming. Without the sustained funding it needs, soft power can't expand on any of this hard work. Venice won't get any more computers, Hannah won't be able to build any more centres, but most importantly, children like David won't have a chance.